another special tidbit. I uh, wanted to introduce you all to the door sill that came with my Model S. And other than being a little dirty, you'll especially notice that you got a bunch of scuffs on this thing. And this is the way it came, and this is a CPO car, so I didn't really think too much of it. It did annoy me, but it didn't annoy me enough to really do anything about it, to be perfectly blunt. That is until uh, YouTuber Derek at Tesla Inventory uh, s put his own little video up with a version of these that were had the Model S lit up. And I figure that goes very well with my Tesla puddle lights that I installed from Abstract Ocean. So this video is me installing those lit door sill panels. To Norm, who doesn't really have a business name, but he does have an email address that I will list in the description of this video in case you are interested in getting a set of these. I got a tube like this in the mail. Actually, pretty quickly, because he hand makes these. So, you know, it's not like it's some business that's cranking these out somewhere. So, let's open it up and see what we got. And then I'm going to put the tools that you'll need to install this alongside of it. All right, and there you have it. Uh, this is not, as you will see, a terribly complex installation. I am hoping that this will take far less time than the dash cam install that I did. Uh, link to that here as well that you should see pop up. Uh, anyway, so here's what you got. Uh, got some extender wires to plug into your power source, the actual LEDs themselves, the affixing of said uh, equipment, so little stickies and uh, some screws. And there is a helpful drill bit that he includes to, because there's some uh, two se uh, sections where you're going to have to do some drilling. So he includes a drill bit for you. Obviously, you're going to need that drill. And then here are the replacement door sills with the Model S part. As you can maybe, yeah, you can kind of see there, there's a, basically some plexiglass or whatever fitted into there. And if you look at the back side, there you are. So that's it. So here's the idea is we're going to, pop the existing door sills off, which is probably gonna be the hardest part because the, these power extenders he's got here plug into existing power. So again, unlike the dash cam install, there's no splicing involved here. Just unplug, plug back in, and away you go. So let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna pull, pull these off here. We'll start on this side. And basically you just need to kinda pull this back just enough. You got pins that are here, here, and kind of back up in here. But once you pop this guy, you should be able to uh, kind of just yank the rest of it. So we're gonna get in here and see what we can do. I'm gonna use my, my flat tool here and see if that'll get it done for us. pins right there. You can see another pin there. So we're going to just kind of gently pop this out. And simple as that, we are out. Quick and dirty. Note, uh, one thing that I did miss there on the back side is that there is a, a little, little uh, guy right back here that you're gonna need to clear too so it's not just not just pulling straight up you're gonna have this guy back here you got to clear as well uh, all right let's uh, head over to the other side and get that done now all right now we're gonna move over to this side hopefully second verse same as the first here get our tool under here again watch this back side there we go I was a little rougher than I wanted to be with that on the other side. Let's see. Pop straight out. And as you can see, this little guy pulled. That's all right, no big deal. Just slide him back right in there and he is good to go. All right, next step is gonna be prying these guys out. All right, so we got the driver's side guy here, and first thing you're going to start with, uh, like I said, get your, get your pry tools out because you're going to need these. And one thing I didn't have in the starting picture is get yourself a, a knife of some sort, either a box cutter, X-Acto knife, something 
because on the edges here, and this is you'll see this when we affix the new one too, they've got glue on the edges that you're gonna have to get under. So let's uh, first things first, you got some clips on the bottom here that you're gonna need to pop out so you can get this out as a module. So just kind of work those out of here. And as you're doing that, you can see right here, you got a little bit of a gap. So you can use that opportunity to stick a pry tool in there and kind of get a spot. Now, here's the thing with this. If you want to keep these, which you could, there's some things that you might be able to do with them possibly artistically. Uh, you want to be kind of careful and just prying this up as much as you can because this is aluminum, so it will bend. So just kind of slowly wedge this up. And like I said, when you get to the ends, that's when you're going to start running into the glue. So actually, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to start on this side first so it can kind of get in here. Just be careful not to cut your plastic. Just use your pry tool, get a little bit up, and get your knife in there, get a little more cut. You can kind of see, you see the white goo in there. That's that's the stuff we're trying to get through. So again, get my knife in there, move on to the next little spot. Again, you can kind of see the white goop in there that we're trying to get out. So just kind of get your knife in there. And there we go, we are free. One side done. Second verse, same as the first. All right, and that is it. So now, and I kept that in pretty good shape. A little bend down here, but nothing that's gonna kill it. So next thing up, uh, we're gonna repeat that on the other side, and we need to get as much of this glue off of here as you possibly can, and it will just kinda peel off with your fingers here, so. You want all of this out as much as possible because you gotta have room for the glue that's gonna come down for. The new insert. All right, one other thing. So once you finally get all this out of here, this is what it's gonna look like. Um, take some cleaner of your choice. Make sure you get these edges where the glue was uh, nice and clean because otherwise you, don't, you want the glue to stick to the surface, not to the old glue. And you might have a situation where it doesn't see flush like it's supposed to, or maybe it'll start peeling up because it's not actually grabbing to the actual material here. So now that we got this out, I'll go get the other one, get this, uh, get this guy out of here. And once I got them both out, uh, then we'll get to installing the new ones. All right, next up, now that we got all this stuff done, we're gonna put these guys in here. And basically, so here's one of the, the LED strips that you get in here, and it's just gonna fit in here like yay. Uh, but you gotta have a way to secure this thing down. And so in the package of stuff that you get here, uh, there are screws to secure this. But in order to do that, you gotta center this up so that it actually works correctly with the, the beautiful lit. Uh, 
uh, scuff plate. So he's included this placement jig so you get the exact right drill points for the LED bar. Uh, and just make sure you got, you're looking at the correct side. So one side is passenger side, one side is driver side, right? So just drop this guy in here. It fit in, fits nice and snug. He had, like I said earlier, he does include a drill bit with it. I have it on authority from Derek's video uh, that this is a 1 16th drill bit if you, for some reason, if it doesn't get included. But all you do is you simply line it up in here. One. Two. Two nice little holes there. And now, those line up. All right, so after you use the self-tapping screws to screw this guy in place, he helpfully includes some alcohol pads along with the sticker, or the, uh, the glue tape that you're gonna, the double-sided tape that you're gonna use. So we're, even though we've already used our cleaning product to kind of clean things up, we're just gonna be double sure and wipe down this area where we're gonna use Blue pad. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to grab this side. That way I don't have to open the other pad just because I want to do this one later. As you can see, I don't have anything in this one yet. We will do that after the fact. All right. So we're going to let that dry, but what, what's going to happen is once we let that dry, you can see that these are different size. So one side of this is a little bit bigger than the other side. That's why you got that there. So we're going to take one of these guys, stick them on here, pull the tape off, take the other guy, stick him on there, pull the tape off. And then on the back side of your, uh, your new scuff plate here, you got double sided tape here. So once we are ready to go, we'll pull everything off, but you can do a nice little dry fit and pop it in there and see exactly how it's gonna work. If it's nice and flush, that way you can, you can see how well you did at uh, getting all the glue off too. That's another thing to remember. So, let me pop this guy back out of here. We'll let the alcohol dry and uh, we'll get the tape on and I'll show you the fitting procedure then. So we are just gonna drop this guy in here. Kind of use the edge so that you line it up so that way you don't touch the, the double-sided tape that's on the other side before you're ready. And drop it in and press down. Sure you get everything attached. Watch yourself on the bottom because your your screw your self-tapping screws do come through the bottom here, so don't don't puncture yourself trying to get this seated. Alright. And that is it. Brand new scuff plate installed. Nice and flush like it's supposed to be. Alright. Now all that's left is to stick them in the is to hook up the electronics, which we'll show you here in a minute, and get them into the car. Uh, part of this is up here. Uh, you'll see my other stuff up here, but we got these these extender guys with a Y cable. So basically, what's going to happen is we're going to take this side of the cable. It's going to go into the into the car where originally whatever was hooked to it uh, plugged in. You're going to plug this guy into that. And then this will come down and hook into your new lit scuff plate. So let's get out to the car and I'll show you the hookup. So in order to get this thing hooked up, you're going to have to pull your light, your footwell light out uh, from the side here. And right here, there's a little, little lip. So you're going to take one of your pry tools, get under that lip, and pull that guy out of there so you have the the end of the power the whole light with the power cable dangling through um, it is literally impossible for me to hold this camera while doing this so I'm gonna trust that you can see what I was talking about and get it done uh, note uh, I have done uh, when I did the puddle lights install for this these things can be a pain to remove so just be be prepared for that so there we go when you get it done that's what you got 
it does not pull very far uh, but we got another little thing we can do to help us out on that so underneath here you can't really see it very well but there is a torque screw a t15 torque screw that it, when you take it out allows us to pull this down and then all of a sudden we get a little more ability to work with this guy so we're gonna unhook that guy and hook in our little Y cable and go from there. All right, so now that we got the light disconnected, one thing I do wanna make sure you notice is that there is this little clip right here. So when you are pulling that light out, when you're pulling the connector off, make sure that you push this tab down when you're pulling, pulling away from the light because uh, otherwise it's never gonna release and you may damage your, your connector trying to do so, and you don't want to do that because we still need it because it's going to connect to this end. So let's go ahead and get that done. One other thing that you're going to discover, because like I said, there was not a lot of length uh, on this thing. So one of the nice things about this mod is that if you ever decide to go back later and replace these footwell lights uh, with something maybe a little brighter from like Abstract Ocean or something like that, uh, you're actually going to have some length because of this little guy that's going to come down to be able to uh, to work with your light for, for this. So let's go ahead and get this in. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and run the, the line a little bit here. As you're going to see, we got our little, our little path here. And basically we're going to take that path and come down and we're going to leave that hanging there so we can connect up to our, to our sill light. So let's go ahead and get this run. Okay, so just wanted a quick little mid-step shot to show you how to do this. So you're gonna run this end connector up through here, and then we're gonna use this little spot that we pulled out to help us run it over to the side. But once you have that in, simply give this little tug from this end and bring your side up. And then what we're gonna do is hook both sides up and then uh, hook the uh, um, the footwell light up and then we will be most of the way done with this. I'm gonna be honest with you probably the hardest part of this installation is getting the footwell lights out. Like I said they are no joke. All right when all is said and done you get a little guy just kind of hanging out the side here. Uh, we're gonna open and close the door here real fast and make sure that the light turns on. Make sure everything is working properly as we're expecting it to. So let's do that real fast. Well, thank you, Car, for picking up my phone and automatically playing music and cutting that last part off. But as we can see, the light here is working properly. Oh, just went out. So, I mean, it's supposed to go out after a certain amount of time, so no biggie there. Everything's hooked up right. Let's, uh, let's go get the actual full uh, door sill and let's uh, put the passenger side back together. All right, so what we're gonna do here, I have the uh, sill in the car. We wanna test and make sure we've got light on the, on the uh, scuff plate there before we actually connect everything and button, or button everything down. So as soon as I open this, that's gonna start the uh, timer on how long the light's gonna stay on, because as we said, it's connected to the footwell light and you saw it go out in the middle of the last little section that I took. So here we go. Open the door. only goes on one way. We're connected and we are lit. So all that's left now is to button things back up. So slide ourselves in here. Taking care to make sure not to pinch the cord. So we got one guy up here that's gonna go in properly. When you line him up, everything else will kind of help itself out. So push him in, 
take care to get your weather stripping on the proper side. Move this guy up. He's in. Move this guy up. He's in. So down here. Again, get your weather stripping where it should be. Get this guy in. Snap him down. Get one last little. And that's it. Your weather stripping back up the way it's supposed to be. Just kind of pull it up on the side there. And there we have it. Passenger side is done. We'll move on to the driver's side. All right, over onto the driver's side now. You'll note, hey, they gave us a heck of a lot more cord on this side to work with. But again, same thing. We're gonna un unconnect this guy and connect our Y cable up, run it, same as same exact way. Uh, again, got a little spot on the side here that we can drop down so we can see what we're doing. So I'll pull that and show what that looks like and we will get to the end. Okay, we're all hooked up, coming through the side just like this. I am gonna note a couple things, a little warning here. Uh, not really a warning, but well, yeah, one warning and one just informational thing. We do have a bit of a blind feed here uh, to get to the other side where you can kind of see what you're doing up in here. Uh, you can kind of use the brake pedal hole to, to see the, the cable a little better. But speaking of that brake pedal, pedal uh, just for safety's sake, because I just accidentally did it, um, keep your key fob uh, somewhere away from the car because if you tap the brake, and the key fob is in your pocket, the car will energize and be ready to drive. Not that you could, um, I mean, you still have to put it into drive or something like that, but just something to know, because uh, it startled me when my seat started adjusting for me. Uh, probably a good idea to keep the key fob elsewhere. So I'm gonna pull this guy through, button this up, and I'll be back to show you the final installation of the driver's side. All right, I wanted to give you a word of warning because this happened to me. Uh, so when you're running the cord for the driver's side, you need to make sure that you put the Y cable when you stuff it in, you stuff it toward the center screen on, on the driver's side. And then when you're running the actual tail, you need to make sure that you're running that tail that goes over to the actual uh, door sill. It's got to go under the steering column. If you put it over the steering column, that steering column, there's a little knuckle that's kind of very close to where you're running that, and it will grab that cable and it will yank it, and then you'll end up with something like this on your footwell light. Now, luckily for me, uh, because I've replaced other lights, I have spares of these, but I am fortunate that this ripped this out of the light and not out of the Y cable itself because then I would have been going to talk to Norm to try and get me another Y cable. So safety, because actually when I was trying to turn the wheel, I had difficulty turning the wheel and when I turned it some more, I heard a snap and I'm sure that's what caused this. So make sure you run it properly, run it underneath the steering column and in front of the brake pedal when you do it. All right, on to the final bit. Uh, just like the last time, we're gonna connect this guy up first, make sure that uh, we got light on it. We should because I tested the uh, footwell light and the footwell light works and we're drawing power from the same spot. So let's go ahead and open this up, connect and make sure that we get ourselves some light. Again, this only goes in one way, so you can't mess it up. And we've got light. So let's go ahead and get ourselves in here. Like I said last time, you can kind of see a little bit on this side. You can line up and get it in there. And that will line up the next one, and the next one, and the next one. We're gonna pull our weather stripping back along the way. So you can take take one of your pry 
pry tools and do it that way. It's probably the best way to do it, to be honest. And there we have it. That's it. Brand new lit panels, as you see, like I said, when the, when the floor lights go out, and they do after a 15 seconds or so, uh, this will, but when you open the door, you will be presented with your with your light. And actually, we can go ahead and do that real fast, just so you can see it again. Door closed. So there we are. Pretty lights, all done. So I said, uh, let's see, I started this project about uh, three hours ago. Um, again, like I said, the worst part of this project is getting the footwell lights out of where they are. On a do-it-yourself scale, uh, on difficulty, I would rate this probably a two out of 10 for difficulty. It's, this is dirt simple. Uh, so like I said, Norm is who uh, um, sold these to me. He doesn't really have a business. I'm gonna link his email in the uh, description of this video uh, in case you want a set of these because they do look pretty, pretty darn fantastic. Uh, and I told him when uh, I did the first story about these on, on the flagship show, hey, you're gonna have a lot of people probably breaking down your door for these because they're, they're pretty, pretty awesome. So 160 bucks for the pair if I hadn't uh, mentioned it before. Uh, and he says he'll get them to you in about two to three weeks from uh, when you placed your order. Obviously, if he gets a ton of orders, that might be a little bit longer than that. And actually, my, my order came actually much earlier. I think it maybe took maybe a little over a week to get my order. So that's it for this uh, special tidbit. Uh, thanks, as always, to the super patrons supporting the show out there. You will see, as usual, their names at the end of this uh, uh, show, giving them credit for supporting the show. Uh, if you want to support the show as well, uh, give a buck, give five bucks, whatever you want to support at, uh, visit patreon.com slash Tidbits, and you can become a patron as well. So that's it for this one. Until next time, keep it charged and hit the road.